Now you're probably wondering why commentaries don't connect the dots. We have, clearly it's the work of the devil. People are being conditioned to accept ancient alien theory, 24 seven mass media at, uh, and their UFO cults are communicating with evil spirits and they're uh, being told what to preach the coming gospel of the, uh, of the soon to arrive uh, ancient aliens. And then you have the Bible that clearly says that Satan and his demons are cast down to the earth. Why is it the commentaries, the learned people of the church, haven't connected the dots? I mean, it seems pretty elementary to me. Well, it's simple. Back in 1215, the Fourth Lateran Council of the Catholic Magisterium decided that angels have a spiritual nature. And Protestants, surprisingly enough, remain faithful to that teaching. Now, they ignore everything in Scripture that contradicts it, like this text here. Spirits don't eat. What happens when they see these texts? They slip into a form of cognitive dissonance. They immediately superimpose upon this text the idea that angels materialize physical forms when they enter into our realm of existence. Now, that's not taught anywhere in Scripture, but that is what they do. Now, a lot of Pharisees became believers. Uh, they didn't have to unlearn everything they believed to be uh, Christians. Paul was a Pharisee. And nowhere does Paul contradict their uh, Pharisees when it comes to angels and spirits. And here we could see they did distinguish them. They did not think they were the same entities. Spirits of spirits would be tautologically absurd. So the demons once were physical, and here's their spirits out there performing signs. Where did they come from? They were released by the angel with the key in Revelation chapter 9. Now we see in Revelation chapter 12 that Satan had cast these Nephilim down from, uh, from heaven to the earth to corrupt the human genome. And they were out there trying to destroy the image of God and man so that the woman's seed could not be born, the incarnation of Christ, the Messiah. And when the floodwaters came, they died in the floodwaters and their, their spirits ended up in the abyss. And that's where they remained until they were released in Revelation chapter 9. Now those spirits, those uh, uh, Nephilim that had not corrupted the uh, image of God and man, uh, maybe they just didn't get have enough time to get into it, or whatever, they died in a flood too. And they ended up incorporeal, roaming around the earth, possessing insects, animals, and men. Christ met one of those who came out of the tombs, called them legion. There was about 6,000 evil, unclean spirits inside that poor guy. And, uh, and that's where they were desperately craving a return to physical corporeality. They don't like being naked. But uh, it didn't work for them. Christ uh, said, oh, yeah, you could go into those swine there. Go ahead. They, they were happy. Oh, yeah, they, ran, they went right into those swine, not realizing it was a trap. Once they got there, they were imprisoned. And they were driven into what prefigures the lake of fire. That's what happened. They died in the lake and, they, and their spirits ended up back in the abyss. Precisely where they didn't want to go, <laughs> to the abyss. Now the angels, the sons of God, I think I mentioned that earlier. They, they didn't, they're not demons, so uh, they're not with the devil and his uh, rebellion. But they did sin with uh, taking wives. And so they are eternally condemned, but they were separated into a different part of the abyss, a place called Tartarus. 
and it's a darkness area. It's not, uh, they're not being punished like the, uh, there's a difference in punishment for them. But that's not the point here. Spirits of demons proves it's not spirits of spirits. All scriptures inspired of God and beneficial for doctrine. It's time for Bible-believing Christians to discard the Catholic magisterium's teaching about angels. It's just simply wrong. And it's blinding them. They're going to get blindsided by this because they don't see it coming. If uh, angels were spirits, then God wouldn't have to make them spirits, would he? This is figurative language. Just like the ministers are not literal flames of fire. God didn't make them literal. They would burn up. No, that's figurative language. Maketh his angel spirits means that they're swift like the wind. And when they appear, they're a consuming fire to anybody who would disobey God. That's the point of this text. It's not discussing angelic nature. And yet you'll see this quoted everywhere in a systematic theology as proof that angels have a spiritual nature. It's cognitive dissonance, confirmation bias, call it anything you want. It's like a mass delusion. And it's going to prevent the church. Many are going to be blindsided by this. The idea that angels could be physical and walk among us on a planet is not believed by Christians. They, they, they think that they have to materialize bodies and it doesn't really happen in a big way. Yeah, they're going to be totally blindsided. When, this, when the Satan and his Nephilim arrive, and their fleet of ships, it's going to blow the ch a lot of the people in the church away. That's why it's said to be a great falling away. There's going to be a massive apostasy from everything called God. They're going to see these ships arrive, and we could see it in the UFO cults. We know what they're going to preach. They're going to tell us that God is just E.T., and that he's a, ruling, a competing faction of extraterrestrials. And he's jealous. He don't. Uh, he don't want mankind evolved, and uh, and mankind's going to buy a hook, line, and sinker, and they're going to end up taking the mark of the beast and be eternally condemned. So we need to re-educate the people who believe the Bible. Need to believe the Bible. All Scripture is inspired of God and beneficial for doctrine. And if there's even one or two texts that disprove your theory about angels, then you need to revise your theory. The Bible ain't wrong. It's you that's wrong. Theologian Karl Barth in his Church Dogmatics Limits of Angelology said this was the one text where angels are called spirits. Now, I agree it's the one text. I don't agree that they're being called spirits here. A verse taken out of context becomes a pretext. Notice the context. The apostle is talking about their relative position to God the Son. And they were never told, sit at my right hand. They were told to serve God. And in fact, in Hebrews 1, 7, we were told that the angels were made fast as the wind and like fire to serve God. So what he's saying here when he uses the word spirits, it's a synecdoche. It's using a part for the whole. He's using that, spirits, as a, to refer to that entire concept that he puts forth there in Hebrews 1.7. And they are serving God as ministers, uh, angels of uh, fast as the wind, and angels who uh, will burn anybody that uh, uh, disobeys God. And they're terrible, but... They're also sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Now, that, that's in context. Their nature is not being discussed. What they do is being discussed. So I, I think we have to look at the context and not make a pretext and think this subverts all the other texts that show that angels are personal beings who have a physical nature.
So we live in the meros. The angels live in the telios, the complete, where the fullness of revelation is, God's revelation. Now, if the telios is in the same place as the meros, then it shall be done away. It's actually less substantial. In our, we are less substantial in our matrix than the angels and the other inhabitants of heaven are in the complete, the perfect, because there the fullness of revelation of God is. And uh, when it comes, just as youth is replaced by adulthood, so also what we have now would be replaced by the telios if it came into this our dimension as it were they're in their alternate reality we're in ours we're separate you have to go through a portal if you want to go into one or out the other that's what happened to elijah when he ascended into heaven in the whirlwind he went through a vortex the whirlwind into heaven or uh, uh paul when he went to third heaven he didn't know if he was in the body or out of the body because you can be physical now if you couldn't be physical in heaven then he would have known he was in the spirit the uh the apostle john when he had the in revelation he went through a door or jacob when he saw angels ascend and descend uh he they went up and down a ladder so you have to go through a portal to enter our dimension uh, our alternate reality as it were and uh, angels use technology this is why the church will be blown away because while they they'll say oh well we believe that angels can be physical in our reality they do not see them as physical beings using technology and they're going around in spaceships and they they have weapons and uh, they they do have war that's when the angels fight it ain't two spirits getting together you know i can't how could two spirits hurt each other anyway but they're physical they can hurt each other and when his disciples asked for signs of his coming of the end of the age what topped Jesus's list was deception. Now, he's concerned about that. He could see history unfold from the first century up into the end of the age when he comes. And he's answering this question, but he has to make the words relevant to the fact that in Israel, shortly after Christ returned to heaven, a lot of false Christs and false messiahs arose and they led the nation into total ruin. In fact, they ended up getting expelled out of Palestine, and they didn't get their country back until the 20th century. They were totally deceived. But Christ is focused on the end of the age, and he, is, he says things in this context that only apply to the end of the age. So we know he is doing both, and that's why you have to be careful when you read this context not to think he's just talking about the first century. He definitely is not. That's Matthew chapter 24, where he's answering the disciples. On to the right, that column is Revelation chapter 6, where the seals are being opened. And those are the events that happen as those seals are opened. They, the order of those events is the same we see in Matthew. So that proves that Christ is looking at both the first century and the end time and the proof of that is there in purple at the bottom on the left side you'll see that the disciples would be hated by all nations that could not happen in the first century they uh, they didn't even know that Christianity existed back then but in the end time when that false Christ the man of sin the man who condones all sorts of sin. He don't care what sin you do. He's working his miracles. He's claiming to be Christ. Hey, you could, no matter what sin you're uh, into, he's going to love you, babe. And the world is going to love his message. 
That's why he doesn't need any arrows for his bow. He is the man who condones sin. But right about three and a half years into his reign, he will morph into the Antichrist, son of perdition, and go out and kill every Christian he can find because he hates them. Anyone who really knows their God and is faithful to the Bible, he's their enemy. So uh, a lot of the church, they stay loyal to this guy as he switches. Uh, uh, if you want to accept his mark and be tormented for all eternity, you go right ahead. But I don't think that's a wise thing to do. But the point is, it's there in purple, hated by all nations, proves that Christ is focused on the end time. He is seeing the Antichrist who rises up. In a way, this Antichrist is something like in Star Wars with uh, Chancellor Palatine. He comes in, real nice guy, everybody loves him. And then he morphs into that uh, Sith Lord. Now, whether the man of sin, when he morphs into the son of perdition, seed of Satan, whether he actually uh, changes phys physical appearance, I doubt it. But uh, that is a nice, uh, a good analogy for what we got here. So deceiving many is relevant to the Antichrist, in particular to the Antichrist. But frankly, if a miracle worker, man of sin appeared, just working miracles and condoning all sorts of sin, uh, I don't think uh, the world is going to make him their leader. There's no way everybody's going to unite under someone like that. Uh, they would debate uh, endlessly forever. That's not going to happen. You need a global spectacle that truly knocks everybody on the floor, knocks them right down where they're, the wind is taken out of them. And the, there's only one thing global of that nature that we uh, are being conditioned to accept every day in mass media. There's only one thing that could really do that. And that is an alien uh, landing. ETs come to our planet. Now that would definitely change the paradigm. That would change times and law. Everything would be thrown into uh, a chaos. And a whole new order can appear out of chaos. Now, it's interesting, no matter what commentary you go to, they generally speaking, <laughs> they don't deal with the idea of Satan being cast to earth. They, uh, they mention a lot of the things, but they don't talk about that happening as though it's a literal event where he arrives, him and his angels, to physically walk on earth as they did in the days of Noah, when the Nephilim walked among men. That was a time of unprecedented spiritism. In Genesis chapter 6, we read that God sent his angels to help man to uh, combat the serpent and his Nephilim, the war of the seed. They were trying to corrupt the humanity, the genome uh, of the human race to prevent the incarnation of Christ the seed of, of the woman, the Messiah, from being born. And they thought they could do that by totally destroying the image of God in man, then that would make the incarnation impossible. So they were striving to do that in the uh, 1,500 years or so that they had to work back uh, in the days of Noah. And that is why, why God had to destroy the whole planet, because the... Uh, They've done a lot of genetic experiments, and the herbivore animals that God created became the hideous monsters we see buried in the, in the flood water, mud, uh, frozen in time. So from the time, in that 1500 years, they took these nice herbivore plant-eating animals, and they turned them into the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and other monsters like that, 
the whole world was filled with violence and the only way to get rid of all their genetic uh, manipulation and everything they'd done to the planet was to wash it away with a flood and then Noah who was perfect in, in his generations he didn't have any Elohim DNA as it were that uh, uh, he was saved along with his family on the ark and they kept some of the versions of those monsters off the ark because uh, and they were created by God these uh, hideous things were were uh, mutations of what was proper but we see these angels come to earth again here in the end time war and heaven they're cast out of the dimension of heaven and they appear here physically on the planet to once again just like they did in the days of Noah lead a tire the human race against God When something is repeated twice in scripture that's for emphasis the devil has come down to you they will appear physically literally on the planet and that truly will be woe to the inhabitants of the earth because they're going to be totally deceived by the message these aliens bring now you have to put the get the context right Satan sent forth the four demons of the apocalypse uh, in a, that's symbolically revealed there in Revelation chapter 6 we have the Antichrist the man of sin he's out there doing his miracles condoning everybody's sin so that the world loves him he's been received into the church the fallen away church as the Christ so that's point one that's there working uh, before all this stuff and then you have these other demon riders they go out and they cause worldwide uh, turmoil they cause war pestilence famine and uh, death is uh, all over the place the planet is too truly maxed out with calamities all sorts of earthquakes uh, wreck the planet and in that chaos when all the systems that the world has to deal with uh, crisis are overwhelmed and the world is uh, crying it's totally in fear of a possibility of war that the terrible weapons of war might be unleashed on the planet it, it just boggles the mind it, it's terrifying so in that mix the aliens come the uh, Satan and his angels arrive promising peace and safety and the world grasps that lifeline like you wouldn't believe there is no uh, anyone who denies their intention is good is going to be hated and that's what happens to the church the three and a half years that false Christ is working miracles are right there at midweek he's tired of these Bible believing Christians who are uh, pointing out that you can't be uh, condoning all that sin and he hates them and Satan hates them this is Satan's plan he has the whole world in his hand eating out of his hand and now he wants to destroy it he doesn't want to rule over the earth he just wants to destroy it he wants to destroy humanity everyone on it he hates God and he knows he has a short time he he's got no illusions he doesn't think he could defeat God in battle he doesn't think he can do anything uh, uh, against God uh, actually what he can do is hurt what God loves but God before he created foresaw everything and he knew everybody as they would have been if the rebellion had never happened if the fall never happened so he's missing these people that have uh, became sinners and they ended up uh, condemned forever he's missing their presence because he wanted them in his kingdom of course they couldn't be evil they had to be he was thinking about them as uh, the perfect versions uh, that would have been if there was no fall so everyone that Satan destroys hurts God God is going to mourn their loss for all eternity every sinner that goes off 
into eternal uh, damnation, God will mourn them. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He'll send them there because he cannot abide with sin, but he will mourn that uh, their absence. So Satan has a, a rational plan. He, he knows he is going to be cast into the lake of fire for all eternity. He knows he has only a short time. There's nothing he can do to stop it. But he wants to hurt God. He wants that parting shot at God. He hates God. He has great wrath. So now he is focused on destroying humanity. That is why it's woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. Now we have symbolic confirmation that ancient alien theory will be the strong delusion that overtakes the planet in the end time. These are flying frogs. Uh, I forget that species that's uh, unique to the uh, Egypt and uh, in that area, but the, uh, the, I think it's called the rocket frog because it expels water and it flies through the air. Through, uh, so we got these flying frogs, and I think it may even indicate what these uh, uh, angels are going to appear as when they pretend or disguised as aliens. They're going to be a, a reptilian, like frogs, and there we see uh, the dragon is speaking. So they got a rep reptilian appearance. The big lie that deceives the entire earth, though, is this ancient alien theory it unites the planet they they believe that Yahweh God is just a competing uh, faction a leader of the faction of Elohim who uh, disapprove of uh, Satan and his angels helping humanity evolve so they gathered the earth to fight God the God of the Bible at Armageddon now, anyone who knows the Bible realizes how ridiculous this is Satan knows he can't win. He's just trying to destroy as much of humanity as he can. Whether or not the beast and the false prophet are in on it, I don't know. Because uh, we see uh, when, when propaganda is pushed in earnest, the people who lie all the time eventually believe their own lies. So it, I think the uh, dragon has deceived even the beast and the false prophet. They don't know, they don't have a clue. Now, if they listen to the Bible, they wouldn't be in that situation, but they didn't. After God lifted his decree, took it out of the way where uh, Satan and his angels could no longer appear on earth, he also took the limit off uh, of what they can do with uh, their uh, signs and wonders. They're lying wonders because they are used to authenticate lies. They're not counterfeit as uh, the New International Version translated. These are real wonders and signs and power. All of it, everything Satan can do will be unleashed on the earth. It'll be a time of unprecedented spiritism. Now in the book of Revelations, we see that symbolically revealed when Michael and his angels kicked them out of heaven. But we also see it in uh, chapter 9 when uh, an angel is given a key to the abyss and out comes all those uh, uh, demons that were sl uh, slain by the floodwaters. The Nephilim, who are on earth cohabitating with men and bearing children, uh, God didn't let them back into heaven. Uh, they were stuck on the planet when the floodwaters came and it killed all of them. You could, you could see the way it's repeated in chapter 7 everything that was on dry earth died that included the nephilim and their uh, the, these demon spirits were locked up in the in the abyss along with the sons of god who got uh, seduced by that conspiracy there was a human nephilim conspiracy they kept doing porno pornographic things in front of the children of god the sons of god who were sent to help man 
and it seduced some of them to uh, take human wives, just like the Nephilim had, and also bear children. They ended up in Tartarus, in bound in chains. Now, they're separated from the Nephilim who sinned, but uh, they're still condemned uh, because they're eternal chains. They're, they're going nowhere. Uh, God is going to treat them differently, though, than he did the devil. Their sin was totally, uh, uh, mostly involved with taking human wives. That was still enough to condemn them for all eternity, but uh, they're not going to be treated as harshly as Satan and his demons. However, uh, back to the point, we see when the Antichrist comes, the man of sin, you can, he needs more than just, Satan needs more than just uh, a miracle worker who everybody likes to uh, rise up to the top. You need that global event, the arrival of E.T. That's going to be the lifeline that everybody grasps when the world is in terrible shape. And they're going to put this guy in charge of that revival of the Byzantine Roman Empire. It's a Grecian version uh, because it's got a leopard body. And this guy here, the Antichrist, actually will become, as uh, in the book of Daniel, he's said to be the king of the north. He's also the little horn in Daniel chapter 7 and chapter 8. And he start, he's the little mouth that pops up in uh, Revelation 13.5, affixed to the, uh, the beast that rose out of the sea, because that's when he morphed into the... Uh, uh, the Sith Lord, as it were. That's when he became the son of perdition. So the pompous words of the little horn are clear. And we know it from uh, the Raelians and other UFO cults. We know exactly what, uh, what he's going to be preaching. He, he says that he's a hybrid human Elohim creation. He's going to believe himself above uh, God in nature. In fact, even above the uh, other ETs. He thinks he's greater than anything living. And he speaks pompous words. He's got eyes like a man because he is still uh, uh, partly human, but uh, and he sees things. He can see what man has, and, he's, and he claims to have now the perspective of God, too. It's all part of the... He speaks great things. He's really a boaster. However... That's, uh, there's a lot happening here. The war of God against Satan is uh, revealed in the bowls. And you could see the subtle change. When they, they gather them at uh, Armageddon and they're fighting God, and that those bowls are coming down, you could see the ancient alien theory begins to get uh, disputed by reality as God proves that he is not uh, just E.T. He starts doing things that only God can do. And it totally takes the wind out of the sails of the big rebellion. They, uh, they begin to realize and You could subtly see the shift. The, at first, when the war starts, uh, humanity is, in effect, shaking their fists at God, speaking, uh, hey, is that all you got? Uh, you know, you're weak. You're this. You're that. You, you don't dare to come here. But after a couple of them bowls hit, it changes. They, they begin to doubt themselves. That's why they had to send out that inspired propaganda, the big lie, to really gather humanity together because uh, people were getting a little bit weak in the knees and they needed reinforcement. They needed a fresh dose of inspired deception to deceive them with the strong, to reinforce that strong delusion and get them gathered at Armageddon. But I have all this revealed at my site. I'm sorry I can't go into all the detail here, but uh, if you go to my site, www.endtimenews.net, you can read all this stuff, plus a lot of other stuff. You'll like that site, it's free. There's, uh, I don't ask for information. Uh, there's no cookies gonna be put on your computer and uh, why don't you check it out? You'll like my site, endtimenews.net. 
I don't ask for your number. I don't ask for a donation. I don't even want your email. I, I disable comments. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking for anything. You, I just want you to take my information, copy paste it, share it with everybody else if you think it's true. And you'll definitely research everything in the scripture. I don't want anything from you. I hope you come back often because I got a lot of articles, some of them poorly written. I'm not a writer. I'm not a video maker either, but I am trying to learn that just to get this message out there because I truly believe that recent events, uh, particularly with Tucker on Tucker Carlson's show where uh, they showed this government released video of UFOs doing things that normal craft couldn't do. They defy the laws of physics. Now, clearly, there is something to this UFO phenomenon. And I believe, as a Christian, that Satan is causing these things. He's creating these spectacular events. People wonder why the aliens don't t land in Washington and talk to the president. Well, but that's not the point of this stuff. The point is to create a mass delusion that is coming in the end time. If Satan hates mankind, he's going to use this to try to take as many people down with him as he can, because he hates God, and he is filled with wrath, and he knows he's got a short time. So he's been seeding humanity. In fact, he's been seeding uh, the United States and Britain the, uh, with alien, uh, fallen angel technology. I shouldn't call it alien technology. It's fallen angel technology. Angels built New Jerusalem. Well, the fallen angels, they, they have the same technology as regular angels. You can go to the book of Daniel, and you'll see where they had battles, and sometimes the angels of God were uh, bested until they got additional uh, reinforcements. So this is, uh, in scripture, these are angels, they're not aliens. And unfortunately for mankind, those who do not believe the Bible, they're going to be deceived. And when they accept the mark of the beast, they are sealing their destiny for all eternity. And whatever you do, do not accept the mark of the beast but you can go to my uh, website check it out it's free i don't want your name or your email or any information i don't have any cookies peace be on to you anyone who wants to be born again uh romans chapter 10 uh all who confess the name of the lord jesus christ in public and believe in their heart they will be saved. I don't care if you don't know all the theological content behind those words. If you go out publicly and you say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who was here a couple of thousand years ago and he rose from the dead and I believe in him, I, I, even if you don't know anything else, that's all you know, you will be saved. God does not lie. Peace be unto you. Have a nice day. Go to my website. You'll like it. Bye.